Hey everybody! In this tutorial, I'll show you one of the new features you'll find in Databic 9 Monterosso, the Build from Excel installation option. Basically, you can turn an Excel file into a web application without coding. CSV files and OpenOffice ODS files are also supported. Let's start with a quick overview. Here is an Excel file containing some data of an hypothetic e-commerce website. Three sheets, our users, the products we sell, for each product we have the description, the brand, the price, and the quantity in stock, and the list of the brands we sell. I opened this file in Google Sheets, but of course you can open and edit the file using Microsoft Excel as well. So let's create a database application starting from this file. I use the first row as labels and I choose the file. All right, Databic creates an application with three pages, users, products, brands. Each Excel column has been translated into a table field. And Databic also tries to guess the data type of a column. So, for example, here, as you can see, the registration date is a date field. Now, let's try to explain the idea more in details. How does the classic database installation work? You start from a database, a MySQL, PostgreSQL, or SQLite database, like this one, and Databic, in one click, creates a web application over it, with the results grid, forms, the possibility to create graph reports, dashboards, export to PDF and CSV, the possibility to implement complex workflows with your own custom code, and so on and so forth. You can also embed your application in a WordPress page. With Databic 9, you can do the same thing also starting from an Excel file. Actually, you can now create a web application even if you don't know exactly what a database or a database management system is. You don't believe me? Follow this tutorial and you will see. OK, first of all, we have to install Databic. Very easy. I've created a folder under my web root. I called it Excel app. Then this is the Databic package I get after having downloaded it. I just have to copy everything I have in program files into the folder I've just created. Then I open config.php and I set the few required parameters. The serial number, the BMS type. Um, here I choose SQLite as the BMS type because if you don't have any skill with databases, it might be the easiest solution. MySQL, however, is the most popular option among database users. Database name. This is the SQLite database that Databic will use to store the data after having imported the data from the Excel file. Let's say the file will be excelapp.db. Finally, we have to fill secret key. I just put a random long sentence here and database session name. Again, just a random word. That's it. Save. Then I install a very simple SQLite browser that you can find at sqlbrowser.org. I'm using it just to create the SQLite database we are using. So, new database excelapp.db. I saved it in the folder Eugenio. That's my user folder. So I have to add the path of the database file in config.php. In my computer, the folder is slash users slash Eugenio. OK, let's launch the installation process. Since the Excel app folder is immediately under my web root, the web address I have to put in my browser is localhost 
slash excel app slash install dot php. Okay, I choose this option, build a new application based on a CSV Excel file. All right, so let's see the options here. File type, I choose Excel. As I said, you can use CSV files or OpenOffice ODS files uh, uh, as well. Then I choose use first row as labels, because let's see again the file, the first row doesn't contain data, it contains the name of the columns. Force string import and max number of columns to import. Normally you can ignore this setting, so I won't go into the details. Install. All right, I log in with the default root account. And as you can see, we have three pages. Using the database terminology, they are table-based pages. Each page is related to an Excel sheet that here became a table. Each column is now a table column. You might wonder why we have an additional field, database ID. Uh, database needs for each table-based page a unique field a field that database can use to recognize its record, its row, in a table. In database terminology, you can think about it as the primary key of a table. So when you build an application starting from a database, database assumes you have such a field in your table and tries to guess the field. When you build an application starting from an Excel file, on the other hand, database always adds this ID field. It's a numeric auto-increment field. You can easily hide this field. Actually, most of the time, you don't want to see it. You can do it by setting its permissions, and I'll show you later. All right, now you have a skeleton for your application, and you can edit and customize it. For example, you can change the label of a field, the position in the form, you can add sections in your form. You can say if a field is required. You can specify a content type. For example, you can say that a field is an email field, so database checks if it's a valid email. In this specific case, because the column name, the column name in Excel was email, database guessed the content type and automatically set it as email. If we try a non-valid email, we get an error. So you can do all these things I mentioned, labels, uh, positions, uh, content type, and many others from the form configurator without any coding. Here is the form configurator. I show you just a couple of things. Uh, I change the label of a field and I make it required. So instead of name, I want uh, first and last name, and I'm saying the field is required. Let's go back. First and last name. And now the field is required. If I try to save without the name, I get an error. Hmm. Then I want to add a section to my edit form. Just before address, I want a section having as a title something like address information. So, form configurator again, address, separator, here we go. And we have a section now. Another thing I want to show you is how to link a table to another one. Look at the products page. Each product has its brand, right? And the brand is just a text box. I can write here whatever I want. I don't like it. I would like to be forced to choose from one of the existing brands we have in our Brands page. It's very easy. Form Configurator, Table Products, Field Brand. At the moment, its field type is Text. I change it to Select Single. What is Select Single in, in Databic? It's a list box, a drop-down menu from which you can choose just one option. We can specify the options here, 
but instead we want to define a lookup field. So the options are driven from another table. Which table? The table brands. Which is the primary key of the table? Forget for a moment the concept of primary key. Uh, here, basically, we need to specify which field of the brands table we want to use to register the information about the brand in the products table. We want to use the name of the brand. In the products sheet of our Excel file, we actually already have the name of the brand, so we need to choose name. Normally, this is the primary key of the table we are taking the options from, but it doesn't need to be the primary key. The important thing is that the field must be unique in the brands table. If you have two brands with the same name, in the brands table, it doesn't work. Link the fields. What's that? It's the field of the brands table we want to show to the user in our drop-down menu. In our case, it's name again. But it can be different. Why? When you design a database, normally you follow the normalization principles. So, I'm a bit uh, oversimplifying here, uh, but typically, instead of storing a name in a table, you store an ID. So, you have a table brands with ID brand and name brand. And, and in your products table, you store the ID of the brand. But, in the drop-down menu, to your final user, you want to show the name of the brand. So you would select ID brand here and name brand here. In Excel spreadsheets, normally this approach is not used. And since we are building our application starting from an Excel file, here we have name for both the fields. Okay, let's see the effect. Apparently, nothing has changed. But if we edit a product, as you can see, the brand is now a drop-down menu and I can choose only a brand belonging to my brands table. So if I add another brand here, the brand will appear in the menu. What happens if you have a very long list of options? like hundreds or thousands. Not very easy to handle them using a classic drop-down menu. Maybe your application would become slow as well because the browser needs to load this huge amount of data. There is a solution. Form configurator, um, brand, we set these two options, user-friendly, searchable, and use Ajax to load options to yes. Let's see the result. Let's try to add a new product. As you can see, now we don't see the full list of options, but if we start typing the first letter of a, of a brand name, it shows up. Okay, I'm not going into further details because there is an entire tutorial that explains in detail how to configure a database application. And you have a link in the description of this video. The idea of this tutorial instead was to show you how the import from Excel works. I just want to mention that you have 15 different field types to use in your forms. Text box, text area, radio buttons, drop-down lists, lookup drop-down lists, and many others. You can see several examples in our online demo. The other important thing you can do to customize your application is the permissions setting. In Databeak, there are users and user groups. In this section, permissions, you can set for each page the permissions for each user group. You can say, for example, that a group cannot see a page. Or if we are talking about table-based pages, you can say a group can read the records but cannot modify them. 
You can be even more specific, saying a group can modify records but not all the fields, just a subset of the fields, while another group can modify all the fields. Again, I'm not going into details because in the same tutorial I mentioned before, there is a part related to permissions. Maybe I'll show you just one simple thing. How to hide the databic ID field. Let's say you want to hide the databic ID field for the user's page. Let's do it just for one of the two groups. We are logged in as root, we, we is part of the admin group. So let's edit the permissions for the admin group. Very easy. For database ID, for all the permissions, we say no. Save. OK, as you can see, the database ID field disappeared from the results grid, from the edit form, and from all the other forms. So that's it. If you have questions, uh, you can add a comment to this video, or if you are a customer, you can use the support forum or the support email. See you next time. Ciao!